What is the best high-end sports car on the market today? Well, if you had a hypothetical 180 grand to spend, there's a lot to choose from. Aston Martins, Bentleys, Lamborghinis, but two of the very best in that price bracket are here today. The Ferrari Roma and the Porsche 911 Turbo S. The Ferrari Roma represents the flamboyant end of the performance scale. Released in 2021, this was Ferrari's idea of a car for people who want to live the good life. An Italian 2 plus 2 with a front mid-mounted V8, big power and looks to sell your grandmother for. It might be a completely new offering without the pedigree of the 911 Turbo, but who could really care when it looks and goes? like this. Wowie! I can tell you without any hesitation at all that the Roma lives up to the hype. It is incredible to drive. If you thought it was all about the badge, you are very much mistaken. The engine, the gearbox, the noise, all of it just makes it so special. That engine is a 3.8-litre, 90-degree, twin-turbocharged V8, sending a healthy 620 horsepower and 760 newton metres of torque via an 8-speed, dual-clutch gearbox to the rear wheels. So it's as rapid as you might expect from a Ferrari, but the way it delivers its power is quite unique. It's turbocharged, just like the Porsche, but it doesn't hit you with that full amount of torque straight away. It's like you have to leave your foot planted and then wait for between 3,000 and 6,000 RPM before it kicks in. It's like you have to work for it, which is actually no bad thing, because if you did get instant torque lower down, the wheels would just spin. It's like you have to find the right stretch of road, ease that throttle, feed the power in, let it reach a crescendo, and then when you run out of puff, not jump a gear and the cycle begins again. This gearbox is an absolute dream. Porsche do a great job with their PDK system, but I don't know, there's just something about the feel of these paddles. It is such a joy to drive. The steering is fantastic too. It is so responsive. It's a bit like driving a 200 grand go-kart. Just the smallest movement has the biggest response makes it super exciting to drive and a little bit scary at times. And then there's the sound. It might be turbocharged and it might not be as raucous as prancing horses of old, but the Roma is still a Ferrari V8, which means it makes quite the noise. Oh yes. <laughs> God, I can listen to that sound all day. Right, that's it, we can ditch the test. I need to sell my house and my child. I need a Roma. It's a phenomenal package, and one that, subjectively at least, leaves many of its rivals in the dust, especially where looks are concerned. How does it compare to the 911? 911 looks a bit like an angry bullfrog. A pretty one, but is it as pretty as the Ferrari Roma? Subjectively, no. But even though it's the less glamorous of the two, on paper, the interior is arguably a lot better. There's just something about it that feels a lot more cohesive. I much prefer the seats for a start. They are way more comfortable and just feel a bit more supportive. And as for the infotainment system, this one is sleek and classy and integrated nicely and also much more user-friendly. The one in the Roma feels like some 1980s tablet that's just been stuck on the dashboard and is not user-friendly at all. I really like the digital display in here as well, that nice combination of digital and analogue. It all just feels a lot classier in here. Whether it's 200 grand's worth, I'm not sure, but you certainly wouldn't get in here and complain. And you definitely wouldn't complain about the performance either. In terms of outright pace, the 911 Turbo S wins hands down. It is just so fast. 
engine wise. It's a 3.8 litre flat six with a pair of turbos that makes 650 horsepower. That's 30 more than the Roma, but it feels like 300. <laughs> yeah. 0-62 takes 2.7 seconds, more than half a second quicker than the Roma. It's also faster flat out, reaching 205 miles an hour to the Ferrari's 199. A lot of that is sheer traction. Because it's all-wheel drive, it puts its power down effortlessly. The Ferrari, however, is just rear-wheel drive, so if you hit the throttle too aggressively, it just wheel spins. This one, however, when you put your power down, it puts all of its power down. Another advantage comes from the tyres. The Turbo S uses wider rubber front and rear, 10mm wider at the front and 25mm wider at the rear. And with its rear engine layout, putting extra weight over the rear tyres, accelerating is effortless and drama free. Actually, that's not true. There is drama, lots of it. <laughs> it is frightening as well, but for different reasons. The Ferrari is frightening because the rear wheels might lose traction at any time, especially in the wet. The Porsche, however, is frightening because it's so damn fast, even in the wet. So what does the gearbox feel like in comparison to the Ferrari? Well, it feels just as fast, and it's certainly just as willing to change. I don't know, the only thing that I think is a disadvantage over the Ferrari is it just doesn't feel quite as tactile, and the engine, yeah, it doesn't sound quite as good reacting to the gear changes. Other downsides? The Turbo S is heavier than the Roma by about 70 kilos. You never feel that weight in straight line acceleration, but in the corners, the Roma feels slightly more alive. The fact that the 911 is all-wheel drive means its steering feels slightly more vague compared to the Ferrari as well. But that doesn't mean it's not playful. On a track, when you push it to its limits, you can get the 911 to go sideways all day long. It's way more playful than people give it credit for. But on a road, with its ridiculous grip, electronic aids and incredible speed, that takes a whole lot more work and bravery. So if you're a thrill seeker, it's the Ferrari for you all day long. Just a word on price, the Roma costs £170,000. The 911 Turbo S costs £180,000. Perhaps a more fair comparison would have been the standard 911 Turbo, which costs £160,000 but is less powerful, although still faster than the Roma. Porsche didn't have one available for us to test, so the 911 Turbo S is the car we have, despite its power advantage and price disadvantage. So which car is best? Ugh, if I had 180 grand to spend, I think it's gonna have to be the Roma, but that is not an easy decision to make. The Porsche is blisteringly fast, astonishingly capable, and really easy to make the most of in any circumstance. But the Roma, it's just that little bit more fun to drive. It is so beautiful and just that little bit more special as well. So yeah, if I had 180 grand to blow, it would have to be this one. But hey, hang on, it's hypothetical money. So I think I'll just have them both.